Okay, so hear me out. I'm personally a huge fan of Battle Royales, and my addiction to them started back in the OG PUBG beta days. And then after that, it actually kind of died out for a while. PUBG disappointed me with the direction it was going, and I never really enjoyed Fortnite or even Apex. Although I am starting to try it out again. I never even played Warzone when it first was released and just really got into it at the end of 2020. So me personally, I really enjoy the competitive nature of Battle Royales and being a hardcore Warzone player, there are times I look for something, uh, let's say less infuriating at times. Anyway, I say all of this to introduce you to a Battle Royale that you may not have heard of, Super Animal Royale. So how's it going everyone, I'm Kalo from Cubo Gaming and in this video we're going to take a look at, in my opinion, a super underrated BR Super Animal Royale. So I originally came across the game, I want to say in June of this year, but I naturally was really curious about what the game was all about. The game is basically your traditional battle royale, launching everyone in the map and you depend on the loot that you get. Also something important that I want to say is that the game is extremely fun and even some of my friends that don't like BRs really enjoyed this one. It has this, I don't know, this feel about it that even if you lose you don't get mad because it's just not as aggravating as some other BRs. It's super relaxed and even if you sweat in the game, you can still have a lot of fun playing it. Or at least that's how I feel, and I'm a Warzone fan. Obviously, what's majorly different is the premise of the game. So from what I know, you are a bunch of genetically modified animals fighting to the death in an abandoned safari park. Aside from that, some of the other details about the game are that there are 64 player lobbies, which I've personally never had an issue getting lobbies, but I'll talk about that later. Oh, and there are other elements that help you get around the map, like riding on other animals like an ostrich or riding around in a hamster ball. You also have the zone, and to be honest, I'd compare the looting and weapons to something like Fortnite, actually, and you'll see why when I start to explain what the gameplay is like. So like I just mentioned, the looting reminds me of Fortnite, and obviously there isn't any building, so what do I mean? Well, first off, there aren't any loadouts like in Warzone, and the real reason I say it's similar to Fortnite is because of the healing system in the game. You have health kits to heal up your health bar, and then you have the shield drink stuff. I know they have a name for it, but I forget. I guess Apex has that too, but the drinking part reminds me of Fortnite. Other than that, the entire game is very different from any other BR, and it's got its own identity to it. One thing that I think should be added to the game is a buyback feature, or at least something like a gulag or something similar. Once you die, it's over, and I think the game would benefit from being able to get bought back or being able to fight your way back. The most obvious thing about the game is that it's a 2D overhead view, so that creates a completely different dynamic than what you'll be used to. Even more so than third person, this is a lot different. I actually enjoy it, and it isn't crazy with how much you can see. So how it works is you have a specific field of view and any objects or buildings will block your view of seeing anyone behind those objects or buildings. And if you are in a building, your view is somewhat limited to what is inside that building only. I'm probably not explaining it the best, but you'll have to try it out yourself. Basically, I think the way they did it and the way they set it up works out pretty well. The gunplay feels great. Obviously, you won't be dealing with any recoil because it's a 2D view game. It's mostly point and shoot, but that doesn't mean it's easy to kill other players. There are a lot of movement elements that you need to take into account when shooting at other players. One specifically is the rolling in the game. So you can do these dash type rolls, but if you time them just right, you can go crazy fast. So if you run into the better players, it's pretty hard to track them since most of them are rolling all around. Kind of like in Warzone with slide canceling. Overall, I really like the gameplay, and it's way different than your average Battle Royale movement and gunplay. I won't spend a lot of time talking about the map, but I really wanted to talk about the map, because I actually think it's one of, if not the most interesting and dynamic maps in any BR that I've ever played. Okay, obviously this won't be as immersive as some of the other BR maps because it's only 2D, 
But for what it is, it's extremely impressive. I gotta say that there never really seems to be any overly populated points of interest in the map. I mean, there are a few, but no matter where you land, there always seems to be someone else that lands next to you, or at least when I've played. The map is split into multiple sections, but there are so many different parts to it that I don't feel I can accurately name them all. Some of the larger areas are forest areas, farm areas, there is a winter section, and some beach parts too. Not only that, but there are really cool caves around the map that have these purple crystal formations and secret laboratories hidden all around. Basically what I'm trying to say is that the map is extremely dynamic and really interesting. The concern of a lot of battle royales is whether or not they have enough base content to retain the player base and enough active new content to bring more people in and keep the player base happy. First, I gotta mention that the game, like I mentioned before, has never given me an issue with finding matches. That said, I checked the Steam charts and it's got a real solid player base. At any given time, there are about 1700 players, give or take, on the game. And when I say at any given time, I mean, this is hardcore consolidation. The game almost never has any dynamic number changes, so the people that play the game really love it, and this game is three years old too. The developers are always updating the game with new skins and items, but I don't think there has been any new maps, I could be wrong about that. I also don't know if they're planning on adding a new map either. Bringing up the skins, the cosmetics in the game are really fun too, and in order to change your animal or genetically modified animal, you can do these tests to create new breeds and types of animals. It's a really fun way of giving players the ability to change up their appearance. I think the game isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and the content is really solid. Just hoping they add a new map soon, or maybe some more game modes. So, should you try it out? I mean, come on. Being a killer furry in a battle royale format? Of course you should try it out. But in all seriousness, I really do like this game and I almost seem to hop on every now and then just to relax and have some fun. I'll be honest, I don't solo play this game and play it like every night, but it seems to be always there when I need something to play and just have some fun with. I actually feel like this could contend with the bigger titles or at least supplement to the big three BRs Kind of a, like a funny alternative that people play to blow off some steam. The game is completely free on steam, so honestly, send your friends this video and convince them to play with you and just try it out. It's a whole lot of fun and I really hope to see more attention on the game. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to check out our podcast, Cubocast, and be sure to try out Super Animal Real.